friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Ready for the next installment of the custom guitar build? The build will start off with me having the sides flipped up the other direction. In other words, the uh, back will be down. Uh, originally, when I put them in the, uh, in the mold, the, the top was down. And I put the kerfing around the back, if you will. So now I have it flipped over. Now the back is tapered, so when I flip it over and put it back in the mold, I had to put a block under the headstock in because that's a narrower part there to keep to keep the the top flat. I don't say all that in the video, but I just thought I'd mention that to you so you kind of get a frame of reference of where we're starting from. So now it's in the mold with the top up and I'm putting the kerfing on there. That's where we're starting. And uh, I won't spoil the surprise because there is a surprise during the build and it's a surprise to the customer. The customer told me to use free reign and uh, build this the way I would build it for myself and uh, I really am going to do that and I'm really making it a very nice guitar and I hope that uh, everyone will agree that this addition that I've put into the guitar is a nice addition and I think it's going to be super. So uh, without spoiling the surprise, take a look and see what we've got. Thanks for watching. Sadness, no toil, no danger, and that bright land to which I go. I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come home. I'm just going over Jordan. I'm just going It's a secret Okay, so what is the secret? The secret is this is going to be a round over here in this area for your arm relief and it'll have trim on both sides. It'll, you know, done correctly and I'm just hoping I'm going to be that guy that'll do it correctly. It should really be a, a nice feature. It should look beautiful, but yet it also uh, gives you that round over so it doesn't cut your arm there on that sharp edge of a dreadnought guitar. So, you know, it's kind of like a built-in arm guard or arm rest. Uh, but hopefully it's going to be a design feature and make it look better too. It, uh, it's a risk. It's a huge risk. I debated on whether I should try this or not. but And I don't have any real specs for it. I've just seen it on another guitar. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing my version of it. I'm just hoping my version will be good enough. That's what I'm hoping. Boy, I sure hope. <laughs> <laughs> the goal that I'm trying to achieve is to make the side come and curl inside of here and not look like it's cut in much. It's, it's, I'm trying to make it look like a real subtle change. And we'll just have to see how that goes because I don't know.
it's going to be a tough thing to do the binding on and all that. It's not going to be easy. I don't know why I bit off this. It's a lot harder to do than if I'd have just done it regular. That's really looking nice now. Got it pretty darn smooth. Nice curve to it that doesn't jolt in or out anywhere. You have to be careful how you're cutting this because you've got to cut it. A, you got to go the way the grain wants to go, that's for sure. Now the next question is, how do I cut that top to fit that? Wow, not an easy idea. There's a close-up of what it looks like right now. I left this piece standing up, the thickness of the top. I'll butt the top up to it, and then this will all just get rounded over and we'll put a decorative edge on both sides of it and come back together and that's the idea boy I hope it works using the calipers here I have scribed a line where I believe the top needs to be cut obviously I'm not going to cut it that far in I'm going to stay outside the line so I can sneak up on it but it looks, when you put it on there, it looks pretty good. This is where you have to have faith in your plan. Because I've spent a lot of time and effort on this top. A lot of time and effort on these sides on the whole guitar, obviously. And now I'm going to cut away. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's like, oh, it's scary as heck. I'm not kidding you. This is actually terrifying. Well, I'm at my uh, fine toothed. Uh, fine blade saw and you know this is in the air a little bit it's a little weebly wobbly we're just gonna sneak up on it and see what happens I left about an eighth of an inch inside my line to, to try to see you know so I can sneak up on it and look and see if the line looks like it's good uh, you can always cut more. You can. It's hard to put it back. Testing the fit here. We still have plenty of stuff to remove. We're nowhere. Nowhere did we cut too much. So that's the good news. I don't know how to do it. I really don't. I. Part of me says go back to the saw and cut some more. Part of me says no. Do it by hand, and then you know, then you won't overcut it. Hopefully, I think we're gonna go by the hand method, and uh, yeah, it's gonna take quite a bit while longer. But with the little finger plane, this thing will cut it right off of there. It it won't take long. It's, you know, I'm just I'm actually what I think I'm actually gonna do is start sitting it down in here. Now the other thing I'll have to do is cut these little braces back a little bit right around here just so that they don't interfere and all three of those braces need to be cut back a little bit. I think I'm going to do that first, give me a little bit of clearance there so that when I slide the top in it'll lay flat. I'm going to cut back oh, on three sixteenths of an inch. But for now, that'll give me three sixteenths of an inch to play with here. And I think I'll need every bit of that, if not more. Sneaking up on it is definitely the best way to go, in my opinion. Trying to cut it all at once is not a good idea on something like this. I mean, unless you've done it a bunch of times and you really know exactly how everything's going to work out and I don't at this point this is pretty much all by guess by guess and bigosh okay so you can see if I was going to that we're not quite there yet it's hitting here and here and you know I think that's the way I'm gonna go with it I'm just gonna try to keep it square so like I'm a quarter inch past my center here and I'm about a quarter inch past my center there so I'll just try to keep it square and slowly work its way into the, the piece here. 
And so the first thing I need to do is cut off a little bit of this. I was a Roman, a legend on sea. that in grain. I'm gonna to have to get a better setup here. This is not working for me. Yeah, cleaned off the workbench there a little bit and got me some more room to work. Put me back on my feet. to be the challenge that's for sure um, it's uh, <laughs> it's not easy I think it's doable it's just not easy and when the night falls and the moon shines above <clears throat> I think in order to make this work I'm gonna have to actually cut in right here somewhere even the good woman's love Bitty cuts make a huge difference on this. It's amazing how much difference it makes when you compare and everything. It's getting pretty close now. It's starting to look pretty good all the way around. It's hitting right in here. I'm still going to see if I can get some more of that out of there. either just because I want it to kind of round into the other piece. I'm a man with a dream and a good woman's Even though I'll probably end up having to cut a, a binding slot in there anyway, but right now I just want this to fit as tight as I can get it to fit so that I, you know, don't have to worry about that down the road. It's probably overkill because, I, like I said, it, it's going to have a binding thing in there anyway, I imagine. So if it's perfect, but doesn't really matter but I think but I think I want it as perfect as I can get it back to a time our love was new. hopefully you can see that I've got this fitting up pretty darn well it's starting to look pretty good too I'm, I'm starting to have a little more confidence in the looks of it and everything I just it still needs to come this way it's not on center yet it's not on center by about, oh, not much. It's maybe a sixteenth of an inch. It's more than a sixteenth, but it's probably less than an eighth. I'm going to have to uh, cut some more out of this. And I'm just tr trying to just put a little light pencil mark where I think most of the cutting needs to be in a little less here. A little less. Um, probably have to cut a little bit more of this off here. So, just taking it off little by little and just mostly cutting it totally by hand. 
lot of it I'm doing with this chisel because I can control the chisel pretty well if, as long as you're cutting the right way on the grain. That's the trick with the chisel. If I turned around and tried to cut up that grain, it would split it out big time. When all my days are filled with dreams of you, lonely evenings that I spend at home. Yeah, when I can't push it up tight, the, generally the braces are hitting. So I keep cutting them off too. It's just a slow process and I just don't want to go too fast. Well, there's your last look at it. While the top is still loose, it fits pretty much like a glove. It's, uh, it, it lines up down the center real good. It fits here real good. You know, you, you always want it better, but it's uh, it's pretty darn fine. Um, I think it's real good. This is sticking out just a tiny bit, but I think it needs to be pushed back in anyway. So that's not a problem. It can go back in as we glue this on. We're, I've already flattened the edges, took a big sanding, a long sanding block and went around it and flattened it real good. Everything seems perfect, so we're going to glue her up. It's time to put, quit thinking about it and just get her done. So here we go. Still keep your picture by my telephone. Oh, what I'd give if that old phone would ring. To hear your voice and all the joy it brings. All my dreams have a beat. Feels good and flat and solid. Very good and very good and solid. Matches up real nice. Couldn't be much happier with it. It's just about as good as I was hoping for or better. So this is how I do it. It's a little different method than some people do. I find that this works pretty good for clamping the top down. And works good as long as your string don't get tangled up like mine just did. I don't think it's ever tangled before. It's just the fact that we're on camera causes that. In, we're always in our cars and leave again. We're not lovers now, we're only friends. I wish I loved you more back then. As you leave, I hide the tears. And that's about all there is to it. We'll just let that sit now and uh, we'll let that dry for, oh, you know, five or six hours. It won't, it doesn't need to dry that long probably, but uh, let it sit about that long before I take the strings off of it. That should hold her in place really well. Looks real good. Pretty happy with that. Well, the guitar stayed in the mold there for about five and a half hours, six hours today. And uh, it's looking good. I'm real happy with it. You know, at this stage, it's a little bit on the crude side. That there, you will say, well, I don't like the looks of that right now. But you know, you're judging it early if that's the case. Uh, you'll have to wait till you see how it's gonna turn out because it's gonna look really cool when I get done with it. But this will be more or less rounded over. There'll be trim on both sides of it coming back together. So in other words, the trim will split off and go around it and come back together. It's going to be really a cool look and it'll be a cool feel because it won't, you know, it won't be cutting your arm off right here on that edge. But uh, the Taylor makes a guitar like that. So you could look up Taylor and uh, look for a, uh, I don't know, I don't know what they call it, armrest, built-in armrest, something like that. But uh, Anyway, everything turned out just great. The inside just looks awesome. You can see how here's that armrest inside there. It doesn't really protrude much. I uh, made mine a little smaller than the way Taylor made theirs. I looked inside one of the Taylors that had that, and uh, I think that uh, mine's a little less intrusive than theirs is. Theirs sounded great. I, you know, their guitar just sounded awesome. So I'm not knocking it at all. It was a great sounding guitar. Um, theirs probably is going to have a little more rollover than mine's going to have, but you know, it's just basically a look thing and a feel thing. It's, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> change the world. I'm just trying to make it a, a, a nice little additive here to the guitar. 
But uh, I'm real happy with the way this the uh, inside looks. Uh, it's very clean. Everything's nice and neat. All the bracings, all the kerfings down good and tight. Uh, everything looks real good. When I tap on it, I know it won't come across on the video, but golly, you ought to hear it. Man, it's like a drum. I mean, it just bangs. It's really got some sound going on. This thing ought to just, it just ought to wail. It ought to really be a screaming guitar. I can't wait to get it done. But uh, anyway, we're going to leave it right there for this version of the video. Uh, you know, the sides need some cleaning up and stuff after the bending process, so it needs some sanding and TLC. I think probably the next thing I'll do is make the back. I'm not really sure. It'll either be the back or the neck. I'm not positive which one I'm going to do first. But uh, I may go ahead and make the back and, and get the box completed, and then we'll move on from there. Thanks for watching.